Hi, I'm Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim. This channel is all about camping, hiking, and backpacking and the gear that goes with it. Today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm doing a three-part collaboration with Mark from Mark Goes Hiking and Crow from As the Crow Flies Hiking. And we are going to be talking about what we like to eat on the trail, as well as just our general strategies for keeping fed and hydrated while we are in the backcountry. I hope you enjoy the video and make sure you check the links in the description below and at the end for the other two videos. All right, let's get started. All right, so I am here with Mark and Crow, and this is kind of the second part of our Meals on the Trail series. And so what we're gonna be talking about now is once camp is broken down, you've had breakfast or coffee or whatever you have in the morning, and you're on trail, what do you do during the day? So the two things I wanna really look at is what are you eating as you go along? Do you stop and have lunch, or do you just kind of graze off of snacks? And then how do you keep hydrated? But I'll just start off. Once I've broken camp and I am back on the trail, I don't really like to stop. So I typically don't plan much of a lunch. That's not to say that I might not stop for a while at lunchtime and eat, but I don't really bring like specific food for that. Uh, typically I'm more about like on a destination hike, when I get where I'm going, uh, my peaches are kind of like my, my goal. Drinking this juice down and eating these peaches, that's been kind of like my little treat in my pack for making it wherever I'm going. I got that from my dad. I typically don't pack like, you know, big lunch meals uh, to have lunch because I usually just like to keep going. I don't want to get loaded down with food. Um, and I typically just kind of save my hunger for dinner. And that's part of my motivation to get where I'm going, set up camp, get everything ready. And then I have a good dinner, which we'll cover in another video. But what do you, what about you guys? Yeah, so I've had to make some adaptions this year um, to how I address hydration and food during the day. I'm very much like you, Doug. I, I'm i kind of, once I get camp set up, I like to get to my destination. I'm kind of a turn and burn guy when it comes to hiking. I, I just like to keep moving. And it's hard for me to just stop and take a break. And I, I don't totally know why that is. Um, I think I just don't like to cool down and get those legs moving again. Maybe that's it. Prior to this year, I would keep all my, my snacks in my backpack. And so I would rarely eat during the day. And all my water was also in the side pouches of my backpack, which are not completely not accessible. But I don't know why. It just takes a little bit of work to get those water bottles in and out. And I would not eat enough. I would not drink enough. So once I hit like mile nine or 10, I would start to get pretty fatigued, dehydrated. And so um, I had to make some changes this year. And so now I put my food, my lunch in a, um, in a hip belt. So I keep my snacks. So I graze throughout the day. I, I don't stop and eat lunch. So I've got my snacks in here and it's right on my hip. Um, I use this on my last actually three trips and I successfully ate throughout the day and didn't get as burnt out. And it wasn't until my last trip that I grabbed one of these aqua clips. You know, I did a video on that recently, reviewing these to keep my, my water up on my chest. And I stayed hydrated when I was in Kentucky. And I'm really grateful for that. So for me, it's about making my lunch food accessible, my water accessible, so that I don't burn out during the day. Yeah, I think efficiency is like a big deal for me too, because I like to keep moving. I don't like stopping. Um, one thing I really like is like on my Zerk 40 backpack, uh, the hiking Viking, the guy that worked with with Mountain Smith to make that, that's his thing too, is he doesn't like to stop. So he put like nine pockets on this backpack and, and all of them are accessible while you're in motion, except for the very, very, um, you know, back mesh pocket. Um, so I really like that a lot because if, if I got my food right here and all I have to do is grab it and eat, or like you said, snap off the water, I've, I've got one of those clips too. You know, if the water bottle is right there, if the food is right there, I'll just keep eating and, and I never really feel hungry while I'm hiking. It's typically once I stop that the hunger yeah. hits. So, um, you know, at the end of a hike, I'm all about, you know, cheeseburger, big chocolate shake, whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Um, but I have to like remind myself to eat and drink while I'm on the trail. So if I don't have something yummy I, and, and easy to get at, I'll, I'll just forget about it. I'll just keep pushing until I crash and then it's usually too late. Um, right. I don't know, Crow, what do you think? Maybe it's because, you know, growing up in school, you, you know, you had the lunch break or whatever, you know, in the cafeteria. 
So I, I, maybe that's just kind of transcended in my hiking career. So, I mean, I, I do a little bit different. Now, I know when, when Mark and I went to Kentucky, I didn't do it as much, but I like to take that, that lunch break, you know, like at work. And so I've usually got these, i am usually either got like the chicken creation or the tuna creation or and a, a tortilla. And then I've got mayonnaise and mustard and put in, or I do the tortilla with the... Uh, with the peanut butter and jelly, the, I steal the little packets from the fast food restaurants, and then I get the GIF to go. Um, but I, I really kind of like what y'all are saying, and I'm, I'm thinking more, I guess it depends on what, if I'm really gotta be somewhere before dark, I, I'm, I probably would eat more on the go, but I've got, to, I've got to get a process better where I have those snacks, like you said, available and ready, uh, you know, convenient, because uh, right now, I don't have stuff where I can get to it quickly, so I got to stop. And if I'm going to stop, I might as well sit down for 30 minutes or whatever, you know? Yeah, that that, that makes sense. So, <laughs> kind of a funny story on that. I don't think you've uh, you've heard this one, Doug and uh, Brad. I don't know if you really caught on when I came down. And but so we're we're on our way from Hanson's Point to um, what was it, Gray's Arch? And I had we set up camp and we kind of chilled out for about a half hour actually, and and I took out a wrap. And I took out a package of pepperoni and I ate all the pepperoni in the wrap. And that was kind of my lunch, I guess, for the day, which is really not what I do. And I learned long ago not to take like breakfast sausages and pepperoni and greasy sausage, right? Because I think we know what happens. And so we're hiking between. I think I know the end of the yeah, story. So we're on our way to Gray's, to Gray's Arch and we stop at the stream and we're kind of chilling out, you know, filtering some water. It was a really nice spot. A little bit of, I don't know if a breeze, but it kind of felt cooler. Uh, down in this valley and man I, I got the biggest stomach cramping in the world so I huffed it up this big hill and um, dug a cat hole and, and put some uh, I put some pancake mix I put some pancake mix in the ground man that hey come on dude this is a this is a food video come on you can't do that to us now <laughs> yeah but you gotta be careful what food you put in your tummy because it's all got to come out some way so you got to be careful with that. You're welcome, everybody. I like, to, I like to get just like little, you know, a bunch of little snacks during the day. And I'm, I'm getting better at putting them in little pockets, especially my hip belt pockets and stuff. Uh, and, and then I'll, in the mornings, I think you kind of mentioned it though. Like, you, you know, I have like a certain number of them and I know, okay, in about an hour, I'm going to do this and an hour, I'm going to do that. Uh, so I'm getting better at just eating on the go, I think, um, with that kind of thing. I kind of feel like I want to be more like you, like, I like the idea of lunch. I just, I think I'm just not very good at figuring out like what stuff to bring because I'm just afraid of it going bad. Like I hiked, uh, I, I went hiking with my boss last year and we came to a stopping point and everyone agreed we're gonna stop for a minute. And all of a sudden he starts whipping out sandwiches. He's got like ham and turkey. He had brought like half a dozen sandwiches with him and he had mustard and mayonnaise. And I mean, it was heaven eating that stuff. We only stopped for about 15 minutes, but to have that sandwich with that mustard and everything, I mean, I wanted to cry it tasted so good. But I usually just have like a bunch of granola bars and peanuts and all the normal, you know, boring stuff you bring. So I guess I just, I'm just not that good at bringing food on the trail because like I said, number one, I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to have to stop and like set up and create food. Um, but I could see, like you say, like grabbing those packets. That's a great idea, you know, just... If I just had tortillas or cheese and salami or something, I mean, I have eaten well on days when I knew I wasn't going to be gone very long. So I went ahead and threw some stuff in that I knew could make it a day or two, you know, some hard cheese and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I think if I got a little better at it, I probably would stop for lunch. Um, but I'd have to want something that I really wanted to eat and not just kind of the typical gorp, you know, granola bar stuff that I usually bring. You know, I, for, I guess probably now for 15 years, pretty much every lunch to me is this, the, the GIF to go, a packet of, of grape jelly and a tortilla. That's the small tortilla. And I guess the first day you could do a sandwich or something like pack in a Subway sandwich, but that wouldn't last more than the first day. <laughs> but that's what I do because it doesn't go bad. Yeah, that's a good idea. I, I think I do need to look at that too. I just need to find something that, that is good to put in it. I like to try to eat as healthy as I can when I'm out. Um, <clears throat> but I, I like the idea of taking out like the um, like the GIF, you know, like a peanut butter packet um, and put that in a wrap. That's kind of a nice idea. Um, 
I like, you know, Darwin sometimes. I, I just actually finished watching his PCT series for a second time. Never done that before, watched the series twice. But, you know, he would do uh, avocado and like Cheetos. Um, but I haven't thought about avocado. They're kind of heavy to take, but if you get rid of it the first day, that's not a bad idea. I think there's a lot of value in stopping for a little while and maybe just just relaxing a little bit. I don't know why, maybe because I'm my brain is always on the go, but um, yeah, I, I stopping and for like a half hour, 45 minutes to rest and eat some lunch. I think that's, there's probably some wisdom there. I think I need to readdress that. Yeah, I think it kind of depends on what you're doing too. Cause like if you're, if you're just on like a really long day hike and you're kind of a little stressed about when you're gonna get out, that's not a good time to stop for a half hour and just sit. Like I would go crazy. Right. Um, but you know, if I was on like a three day backpacking trip and that's all I was gonna be doing every single day, well then yeah, I would definitely want to stop for a while. Um, you know, I'm not a mile killer. I, I, I backpack to hike and I hike cause I want to see cool stuff that you can't see from a car. Um, so I'm, I'm not out there trying to kill myself just so I can have some impressive stats when I get home. Um, but I think honestly, because so much of my hiking is just one day stuff just because of my schedule, um, I just don't get that many opportunities to do like multi-day backpacking trips. But yeah, I mean, if, if I wake up on trail and I'm going to go to sleep that night on trail, there's no way I'm going to be walking the whole entire day. Yeah, I think it's good, you know, to maybe take that break and get a wrap or something and maybe put just put your feet up against a tree to kind of, you know, take off some of that pressure of the legs. <laughs> One thing I wanted to mention before I forget is these little uh, Neutralite things are really cool. They're basically little liquid packages, so you just twist them and squirt them inside a bottle and shake it up a little bit and you're ready to go. Um, but these are good like antioxidant, they come in some really cool flavors. So if you don't want to pack like a bag of powdered Gatorade or something, uh, these are really tasty. Um, the only thing is I don't know that they have electrolytes in them, so you know the, the salt liquid balance is really important. Um, you can actually get overhydrated and make yourself sick because you don't have enough salt. Um, so one thing I, I think is important is that while we're talking about hydration and snacks is that salty snacks are actually really good to have on the trail to balance out the water you're drinking. Unless you're drinking something that has electrolytes in it, you want to make sure that you're not leaving too much salt out of the equation. There's a word for it when you actually have too much water in your bloodstream and in your system um, and it's not balanced out by the salts. but. Um, anyway, these are tasty for just flavor. Um, yeah. So what, what do you do, Crow? Like, are you a, you a bottle guy, you a clip guy, you a, um, reservoir guy? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always been, since I switched over from the bladder, I do the smart water uh, bottles and Mark has kind of, uh, inspired me to get the aqua clip. So I got the aqua clip, but in the last year, some buddies of mine have been using this stuff. It's, uh, the tailwind. And uh, it's an electrolyte uh, formulation. It's got, um, you know, all kinds of potassium and magnesium and things. And it's got a lot of nutrition in it. So there's all kinds of flavors. There's raspberry. Uh, there's the Colorado Cola. But essentially, you put this in a, a liter bottle and you drink it throughout the day. And it's supposed to give you the salt content. I've been trying it. I'm no scientist, so... I don't know all what it does, but a lot of ultralight runners and long distance runners use it. Uh, some of my buddies take it in the morning and take the, the tailwind, put it in their water bottle and then add some uh, protein mix in it too. And then they drink that throughout the day. So that's what I've been experiencing with. I can't say that I'm an expert at it yet, so I'm still trying it, but I've heard some great things about it. I actually looked that stuff up once and it looked pretty expensive. So I, I'm glad I, we have a guinea pig and you can let us know if it works before we go buy it. Yeah, it's it, it's kind of expensive. I have no affiliation with these people. I'm just trying it out. I'm buying it. But they, they, do, they do sell it in a big pack, but I've just got the ones that I found at a running store for like $2 a piece, and I'm going to see how that works. If it, you know, because I've been having some issues during the day, especially during the summer with heat, and uh, I'm hoping that this will help. Mark, so you're a smart water smart water bottle guy with the clip is that your that's your thing now right yeah i'm definitely more of like a life water guy um because i have done the the bladders but i don't know you just never know how much you have left and then you run out and you realize you got like two miles into the next water source and um, i always like to see how much water i have and also if your your filter bag happens to break or gets a leak 
Uh, I think we all know you can attach your Sawyer uh, water filter right to those bottles. They're just super convenient. Um, they hold a lot, you know, you get the one liter bottles, the 750 milliliter bottles. So I've used those exclusively for, I don't know, probably at least four years now. Nice. Yeah, I'm totally sold on that system. I, I basically like, I bring my knack bag uh, so that I don't have to sit there and hold the bottle for like 20 minutes waiting for it to fill up. Um, yeah. Sawyer squeeze. So like, that's just kind of my standard. I bring that all the time, no matter what I'm doing. If I, if I'm out anywhere off, you know, road for very long, I'll bring the bag, I'll bring the uh, filter. And then smart water bottle is perfect for that. Cause like you say, you can drink right out of the bottle. Um, and then just having the bag is great because if something goes wrong, bam, you've got another liter or you can even get, I think the two liter size, like that's kind of my backup storage if I need it. But I don't like cleaning bladders and I get freaked out leaving them just wet, you know, for days on end. Um, they're a pain, they're, they're a pain to fill. They're a pain to clean. Um, they're really only convenient when you're actually using them. So if I'm if I'm going to be somewhere for more than just a couple of hours, I, I just I just leave the bladder at home. They're just they're not worth a hassle for me. Do y'all ever feel feel like the bladders taste? The, I, there's some taste to the bladders, like it's a plastic taste or something. I was always concerned about that if I had it for too long. Do y'all ever get that? I had it with one, um, but I. <sighs> I think it's maybe it was the first time I used it and I rinsed it with warm water before just to get that kind of new taste out. But yeah, there was one I had it with, but I don't think I ever used it again. Um, but I had another one. It was a little better brand. Um, I think it was a Camelback brand and uh, it was for day hiking, day running, whatever. And I never had an issue with it. Yeah, I don't think I've noticed that. I think it just a lot of times once the water gets warm, it's, it's just going to taste gross, you know, and that's, <laughs> I think that's part of the difficulty with it. Yeah. You know, I will say this too, Doug, you alluded with the, uh, with the not knock water bag, you know, to filter through. <clears throat> and I did use that in my, one of my trips this summer where we didn't know if we're going to have another water source close to our campsite. So I loaded up my, my two one liter bottles and then I actually loaded up that bag and just strapped it uh, right on top of my pack. And so I actually had four liters of water. So I was good right through morning until our actual first water source uh, on the next day. So it's a real big perk to the to the knock. knock. Is um, you get two extra liters if you need it. Hey, you know, also the, the one thing that happened to me was I'm glad I kept one of those Sawyer bags that I got from my Sawyer Squeeze. I kept it in my pack just as an extra because my, my son dropped my Canock bag over a waterfall and luckily I had that Sawyer bag as a backup but I, I like Mark's idea to have um, to use that as an extra when you you know you need really need to camel up for water for the end of the night absolutely yeah I that, that's just part of my standard even on a day hike I just I just wrap the bag around the Sawyer filter and then I'm good to go and I know that I can I can go a lot farther and I've got a plan B if something else doesn't work out it's great all right, so any other last minute tips? Is there anything like um, that we haven't covered that w would be uh, good for our viewers to check out as far as snacking, lunch, or hydration? My tip would be, and I learned it this summer from, from backpacking so much, was I, I really never understood that whole cameling up thing, but along with what Mark said, I think when you come to a water source and you're filtering, go ahead and drink that liter of water while you're at the water source and then, and then fill up your stuff so that you're hydrated right then with a good amount of water before you keep hiking. You know, I think it helps. I, I will say this with hydration, coming from a guy who probably <clears throat> experiences not being hydrated enough on the trail more than being hydrated enough. Um, drink a liter of water before you leave your campsite. So just from waking up to the moment you step foot off your site, try to have enough water with you so that you can have one liter before you start your day. And then I also like to, before I end my night, have a liter you know if i roll in you know a half hour before dark this doesn't apply but if we roll into our site and we still have a few hours before it gets dark i want to drink another liter um by the time i get to camp uh until bedtime it just helps you stay hydrated so that would be my tip drink 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 of course then you need another kind of bottle in your tent that night that's true <laughs> that's true but i have learned um to set up your tent strategically so that you can open up the side door that you don't get in and out of and just pee right from your tent it's great being a guy isn't it it sure is if you haven't been hiking a lot or if you haven't been dehydrated a lot um get to know 
what your body really needs to drink because it's amazing to me how much the weather can affect that. Like, for example, on the Half Dome hike, it was a pretty hot, glaring, sunny day, but I never really felt that hot because it was cold up in the mountains, and so my sweat was just wicking. I mean, I had all my good wicking clothing on and everything, so I wasn't really feeling all that sweaty. I wasn't really feeling all that hot. Everything just felt fantastic, and the next thing you know, I'm like, you know, about ready to puke. Um, for some of us, like, apparently, the dehydration can really sneak up on you, and, and you don't feel thirsty the way you do in a normal day when you haven't been drinking enough. Um, so that's something I got to work on myself personally. Same, you know, it sounds like the same with you, Mark, is that I basically, I almost need like a little, you know, I don't know, timer to go off and remind me to keep drinking. So I, I think that that's like one good argument for the bladder or having the bottle on the clip is that you need to be constantly reminded that you've got to keep drinking, even, even if it doesn't feel like you need to, if you don't feel that thirsty, that could be for other reasons. Maybe you're just distracted, you know, adrenaline, whatever. Um, but, uh, it's just real easy to let the snacking go, let the water go, and then you're in a bad spot before you know it. Yeah, I do it by time. I literally, every half hour, I make sure that I've had enough water out of my bottle, and then every hour I make sure I take a bite of something, you know, like, like half a bar, or I open up a peanut butter packet and start eating it. So every hour I'm making sure I'm eating something, and every half hour I make sure I go through so much water. And that helped me a ton. Um, on my summer trip so far. All right, well, I hope this video has been helpful to all of you. If it has, why don't you give it a like and make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And make sure you hang around. Check out the end of the video. Look in the video description so that you can see where Mark and Crow's videos are. And we will see you next time. Um, I, I mean, you're, you're like, you're... Huh. Blah, 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 blah. Put that in your B roll. There's, there's the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stick that in your outtakes. Um, I don't even know what I was saying.